Hi, I'm Jill, the other half of Our Spanish Adventures. Normally I'm behind the camera or on the editing desk, but today I'm going to be a bit more... <laughs> but today I'm going to be a bit more hands-on. Excuse my giggling because Lewis is doing silly things behind the camera. Today I'm going to be a bit more hands-on doing the first service on my C4625 Touring Overland. And I'll go and change into something a bit more suitable. Ready to go. So you'll notice, first of all, that we've removed the storage compartments from the front and the back of the quad. So the first thing we've got to do is the valve check, which has to be done when the quad is cold. So we'll have to remove the rear seat, the front seat, all of the panels, and also the crankcase here to allow us access to the crane. Pull the handle at the back of the rear seat, which is here. Two hands, because I'm a girl. There we go. The seat itself is quite heavy. And the front seat, the little lever is here. Just click that. And be careful with this because you've got a wire for the seat sensor attached that has to be undone first. Just pop this cover off. So this is a special little tool we've purchased to be able to pull the pins without damaging them. So all of these four pins here need removing. Hold tight and pop it out. Take these bolts out now to allow us to start taking the side panels out. So a little tip here to help me remember where they've got to go back. I'm going to take a little piece of tape and just take them next to where they've come out from. Just put a bit of cellophane over the fuel tank so I don't drop any bits of shit in here as I'm taking things off. All the bolts that have taken off so far are 10 mil. To lift this up slightly, just miss this fuel cap part of it, and then the whole thing just lifts off. The next thing is to remove the airbox cover so that we can take this plate off here and then we'll be able to take the fuel tank out. Fuel tank is now off. I've taken off the side casing and you can see the clutch assembly. So this is the valve casing. Should be able to just take the four bolts off and be able to get this casing out without removing this coolant hose. So finally down to the valves. I have to say this is a lot more complex than I realized. I'm neither myself nor my husband a mechanic. So if you've got any hints or tips that you want to give us, we'd be very grateful for them. Um, he's obviously supervising me today and he's quite a knowledgeable guy. Having learned over the years, both from his dad and from the internet. Put a wrench on the crank so I can turn the engine over so that I can line up those two marks with the cylinder head. When they're lined up, it means the engine is at top dead centre, which is what you need for adjusting the valves. And then if you can see, there's a feeler gauge on the valve. So I can check that should just have a little bit of pull, but that's fine. Put the side case cover back on and also replace the fuel tank and reconnected all the wires and hoses. Tank cover and the seat are back on. And I'm just going to pop the door open. Just going to start it up now and make sure it all sounds okay after the adjustments. I'm going to put the side panels on the right hand side here back on. So before I put it back on, I'm just going to grease where the rubber push pins go to make it easier for them to go on. So these are the final three bolts to hold the side panel on. So we just give them a quick tighten up. I'm going to take the spark plug out. Okay, there we go. So that's the end. Uh, I just need to give a quick clean. Okay, so that's, that's pretty clean. So the book says it should be said 0.7 millimetres plus or minus 0.05. So let me feel your gauge. Just check that. Yep, 
that's fine. I'm just popping this back in. Lewis has just warned me not to cross thread it, so I'm being very careful. And then just pop the HD lead back on. So I've got a lovely bit of sticky tape here. Shows me where these bolts came out of. Next, just lined up. completed the valve check and put the quad back together. We've run the engine for about five minutes just to warm the oil up. We'll do an engine oil change and filter and also we are going to change the differential oils as well. Yeah we're going to put the um, oil on four axle stands. I don't have a trolley jack but we do have this um, crane set up. I'll lift the quad, I'll lift the front first and then the back and uh, I've made these um, little metal bars, these are just to hold it in place to stop it from slipping out. But these will go on underneath the chassis and then it will sit on the axle stands like so and it will be nice and stable and also means that we can use the, the roller trolley to get underneath. I've also left the crane cable on the back and there's the rear one. It's all nice and stable, nice and secure because Jill's going to get underneath there now and do the engine oil change, oil filter and uh, we'll see how she gets on. going to loosen off the dipstick. Lewis would say it's the dipstick loosening the dipstick. That allows air to get in there. There we go. Take the plug in underneath. And this is the air filter. That's unfortunate because that's the oil filter. <laughs> and this is the oil filter. I get my words muddled up, I'm sorry. She doesn't want to get oil under the fingernails. No. You tools ready? Oh, you're really not going to film me trying to get on that, are you? No. Strain around, so I'm just going to give it a gentle wipe and check it for natural filings. It does look pretty good. So I'm just going to put the strainer back in next. We're now going to replace the oil. The manual says 2.8, so I'm going to put in 2.6 and then start the engine to let it circulate. So we started the engine up and let it run for a few minutes and then recheck the oil and topped it up to 2.8. We'll check the oil levels after we've been out for our next ride out. That's that part of it done. Differential oils are next. So I just need to loosen that off um, to let the air in to undo the plug underneath for the differential oils. Lewis said I needed to stick my head under here. I think he just wants me to get a face full of oil going to show you this metal filings and shit so although we weren't supposed to do the differential oils I'm really pleased we did because this magnetized plug has picked up all that out of the oils this one's the rear filling cap just pop that off as well so 
So as you can see, this one is almost as dirty as the front one. I'm now going to refill the differential oil. So that's the engine and the differential oil is done. The final check is to take off the rear wheels and check the service joints, see if they need greasing up. They're in here, look. if you're looking from oh, the top I see. There, yeah. you can see the brake pads. Yep. Yeah. We're going to do is get the grease gun and these are grease nipples. Okay. And we just make sure that there's enough grease in there. Just on the top nipple with grease and there's one at the bottom here as well. Third one at the back here. So I'll give that some as well. The first two were a little bit lacking on the grease, so good job we checked. So I'm putting the nuts back on and hand tightening and then I'll let Lewis talk them up with his torque wrench. That's the service and the valve check all complete. A lot more went into it than I thought to start off with and it took us a lot longer. I don't know whether it was so tiring because of the work or because Luz was having to teach me and I was having to learn. That was pretty hard, but fun. It's given me a really good insight into what it actually takes to maintain a vehicle like this. I know that it takes a lot. You know, when we come back, it gets power washed down, dried, all the bits and pieces uh, are checked over, nuts, bolts, everything, air filter cleaned, all that sort of thing. But to actually keep it mechanically on the road as well, there's a lot involved. And I appreciate um, what Lewis does on a regular basis and um, to keep it safe for me. I think the only thing that I found difficult um, in the service and the valve check was actually undoing the nuts um, when they're torqued up. Just for me, it was a little bit too much. Wait a minute, Jill. Oh no, <laughs> what's he doing? <laughs> I've got you an early Christmas present. Oh, it doesn't rattle. <laughs> what we got? Oh, it's an impact wrench. That'll make it easier. <laughs> I hope what we've done in this video has been useful. If it has, give us a like and maybe subscribe and we'll see you again soon.